Schrodinger's wave equation, 1926, accounts for both wave and particle behaviors of electrons. So there's a picture of Erwin Schrodinger. There is his wave equation, don't bother writing this down, for a non-relativistic particle of mass m with no electric charge and zero spin, where h bar is the reduced Planck's constant, which is of course equal to h over 2 pi, and v is the potential energy and psi is the wave function. Now that might cause you to think that Schrodinger was actually Satan. We don't think that's the case. But what's the gist of this story? Here it is. Solutions to Schrodinger's equation yield wave functions which are symbolized by this Greek letter psi. And psi, as far as we can tell, has no physical meaning. However, psi squared at any particular point in space gives the probability that you'll find an electron at that point. Psi squared is the probability density which gives the electron density. In other words, we can use Schrodinger's equation to help us determine the probability of where we might find electrons. The solutions to Schrodinger's equation give us some unique shapes as to locations that have a high probability of where we might find an electron and we call those regions of space orbitals. Orbitals, it says here at the top of the screen, describe a specific distribution of electron density in space. You should recognize at the very least the top four of these if you've taken a first year chemistry course in high school. S orbitals are spherical in shape, P orbitals are dumbbell shaped or almost figure eight shaped you might say. Then we have D orbitals which for the most part look like four leaf clovers except for this one here on the right which looks like one pacifier that you would buy if you had twins. You would pop it in their mouths and stick their faces close to each other. Of course, then they'll probably both become cross-eyed and that would bring further problems. In any case, each orbital has a characteristic shape, shown here, and a characteristic energy. And again, these shapes are solutions of Schrodinger's equation. I wouldn't say you have to memorize this, but as we go to the F block, lanthanides and actinides, which have 4F orbitals and 5F orbitals, you can see that the solutions, that is the shapes of the orbitals, become increasingly complex. And we also think that G orbitals exist. We have S orbitals, P orbitals, D orbitals, F orbitals, and we also think that G orbitals exist, and this is what they look like. No, they don't. This is just a complete mess. Theory says that there are g orbitals, but I'm not aware that we've done anything very useful with g orbitals. However, that's what science is all about, pushing the limits, learning things that we couldn't have even imagined previously.